Welcome to this edition of the Astrological Weather Report. My name is Daniel Fiverson. Today, I would like to talk about the second eclipse season of 2022 and the signs of Taurus and Scorpio. An eclipse season is an approximately 35 day period during which at least two or, th or three, possibly three eclipses will occur. There are two eclipses in one eclipse season and two eclipse seasons in one calendar year. And typically there are at least four eclipses per year. Eclipse seasons repeat in cycles of 103.3 days, which is somewhat shy of six calendar months. In order to see a lunar eclipse, the moon has to be above your horizon. It has to be night or close to night, and that only happens for half of the Earth at once. A total solar eclipse can only be seen from a narrow track along the Earth's surface. The accompanying partial solar eclipse can only be seen in the areas adjacent to that pathway. The moon's orbit is inclined five degrees to the ecliptic, which is the Earth's orbital plane. Most of the time, the new moon or full moon swings too far north or south of the Earth's equator of, of the ecliptic for an, an eclipse to take place. In other words, the, the ecliptic is five degrees above or below the equator, and it, the, the moon swings far north or south of that, uh, uh, the, the eclipse um, doesn't happen. It has to be within a certain range. Eclipses occur when the sun, moon, and earth are in alignment. A lunar eclipse occurs when the earth is between the sun and the moon and can only occur when the moon is within 11 degrees of either lunar node. A solar eclipse when it occurs when the moon is within, this, is within uh, sun and earth and must be within 17 degrees of either lunar node. Twice every month, the moon circles the earth in its orbit and the moon crosses the ecliptic at points called the nodes. If the moon is going from south to north, it's called the moon's ascending node. If the moon is moving from north to south, it's called the descending mode. The lunar nodes are actual points in space where the ecliptic, which is the imaginary line drawn by the Earth's orbit around the sun, intersects with the circle drawn by the moon's orbit around the Earth. There's no physical body there, but these points in space hold significant energy. This energetic intersection of the di diurnal motion of the Earth woven with the moon's monthly cycle represents the etheric pathway from past to future. The moon's nodes are the karmic evolutionary trajectory from the past emotional patterning held in the south node to the future soul intentions of the north node. The resolution point between the unresolved past and the probable future is the natal moon in the present. The south node correlates to the past, what has come before. It is the composite of our previous lunar personalities, our emotional bodies. The north node points towards the future, but the north node is a probable future. More than one potential future stretches out from the present. The choices that we make in the present determine the direction the future takes. When we repeat the choices of the past as the present, the past just becomes and repeats as the future. If we make different choices, we create a future different from past and present. There are, there are in your terms then unlimited probable future events for which you are now setting the groundwork. The nature of the thoughts and feelings you originate and those that you habitually or characteristically receive set a pattern. So you will choose from these probable futures, those events that will physically become your experience. In other words, what Seth said, channeled by Jane Roberts, is that we create the future and it is a probable future. Eclipses occur in 18 year cycles, known as Saros cycles. This eclipse belongs to Saros cycle 124 and eclipse and the references the eclipses of 2004. That year, President Saddam Hussein 
was tried for war crimes and crimes against humanity. Mark Zuckerberg launched Facebook. Car bombs and suicide bombings shook the Middle East. NASA launched its first hyper, hypersonic jet. Early in 2005, still under the influence of the, 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 last, uh, the last eclipse, Eris, the most massive known planet in the solar system, was discovered. North Korea announced it possessed nuclear weapons, and the first ever YouTube video was, up, of, was uploaded. And as you can see, there are direct correlations to all of these events, again, right now. A total solar eclipse occurs on October 25th. Pluto is the modern ruler of this Scorpio moon. You can see that the, the moon is in Scorpio, ruled by Pluto. So Pluto becomes the, the, ruler, the ruler of the eclipse itself, of this new moon. An eclipse season formats the next six months and beyond. <clears throat> each, each month, a, a, lunar, a new lunar cycle formats the next four weeks but the eclipse is six months going, going forward. Pluto is the planet that is imprinted with the curriculum or curriculum of life lessons. It carries, in, it is embedded with what came before and what, is, or what our soul is intending for us going forward. Currently, the Lord of the underworld, <clears throat> Pluto is moving through the final degrees of Capricorn, which are the most intense and most accomplished degrees of Cap Capricorn that Saturn sign that generates form and structure. And we can see all the form and structure that it has created around us. The ongoing changes to our normalcy will begin to harden. In March, Chthonic Pluto will briefly move into Aquarius ruled by sometimes disruptive or traumatic individualistic Uranus. Scorpio events are Chthonic. They occur in the underworld the mythological abode of the dead beneath the earth. The subconscious mind is our emotional underworld. Repressed personal trauma is hidden there. These are the fragments of ourselves that have been disowned or denied what, the, what the shamanism calls soul loss. What is below the surface is not necessarily dead and buried. Under the earth are treasures, precious metals, minerals, and gems. Hidden away in our subconscious are the parts of ourselves that we have secreted away, that we have fragmented off. These treasures are waiting to be exhumed, healed, and reintegrated into our personality uh, and to uh, the personality that we are self actualizing. In the astrological 12 letter alphabet, Scorpio formats the energetic frequency of the eighth house. The sign on the cusp of the eighth house. Its ruler and aspects delineate the shadow material hidden below the level of our everyday awareness. That's in general in any chart. Pluto's evolutionary dynamic will probe for the shadows and make deep incisions where unresolved energy needs to be released. At this new moon, Venus embraces the sun and moon. This placement presages the Taurus lunar eclipse on November 8th. Uh, Venus being the, the, also the ruler of Taurus. In the sign of Scorpio, Venus is powerful and self-directed. It is her inner directed yin expression. Uh, in Taurus, uh, that's the goddess of relationships going below the surface, disgorging feelings about how we have stood in our authority and our sacred commitments. Emotions that have been buried or ignored are exposed. Anger, resentments, and injustices from the past that have not been addressed or alleviated can boil over. On November 8th, the Taurus full moon is a partial Taur Taur Taurus lunar eclipse. The archetype of Taurus embodies what is essential for survival. Taurus is sex and the procreation of the species. Taurus underscores what we value, such as money, art, food, shelter, and clothing. Through her yin inner expression in Taurus, Venus projects inward to find value and meaning, reflecting who and what we are becoming. The sign on the cusp of the second house 
its ruler by sign and aspect, and Venus by sign and aspect format our values and priorities regarding the necessities we deem we need to survive. The transits of the lunar nodes through this polarity and the transit of Uranus through the sign of Taurus have exhumed what is truly essential to our survival as individuals, families, nations, and of the planet itself. The world as we know it continues to be radically reshaped since Pluto's entrance into Capricorn in 2008. Saturn joined Pluto and Capricorn in 2017 and ushered in Donald Trump and COVID in 2019. The Lord of Time is currently exercising a Uranian agenda as he transits the sign of Aquarius until March 2023. From chaos, Uranus was born from the union of earth and air. The Greek god of the heavens is currently earthbound in Taurus. The firmament is shaking the earth to shatter the toxicities that have gathered and to heal and restore the primordial chaos from which everything was born. Chaos is not destruction. It is the union of all that is. It's the primordial state. The cosmic cards are being reshuffled. Since the beginning of this year, the, the entire planet has been subject to the stressful crises created by Saturn squaring the lunar nodes. Saturn has also been squaring Uranus. Saturn creates form and structure. Uranus shatters form and structure. Saturn is doubling down on the planetary frequencies in Aquarius, the sign ruled by Uranus. Three exact meetups occurred last year. The outer planet and forces will still influence each other until November of 2023. These disoriented dynamics have combined to plow through our normalcy like a raging bull. This Saturn and Uranus nodal square underscores the lunar eclipse at the Taurus full moon on November 8th, as Uranus is in tandem with the lunar north node. Jupiter is moving backward right at the initiation point of Aries. In just a few days, it slips back into random abstract Pisces. When Jupiter, the planet that enlarges all that it touches, moved through the last, moved through Neptune's sign last, a global pandemic swept the world. Right now, a whole new series of alphabet variants are emerging around the world as Jupiter prepares to re-enter Pisces. The king of the gods will fill this boundless space again until the end of the year. As the new year begins, though Jupiter returns to Aries, characteristic of impulsive, aggressive, self-oriented Mars. Mars in Gemini has much to say, orating binary versions of reality. Relative to Mercury in Libra, the pendulum swings back and forth between opposing views saturated with radical and frequent violent expressions of personal beliefs. <clears throat> you can see um, how, how I derived all this because Jupiter is ruled by Mars and Gemini and Gemini is ruled by, uh, actually called the dispositor, by Mercury and Libra. So the Mercury and Libra underscores Mars and Mars in Gemini underscores the, the Jupiter energy at the moment. The Taurus full moon is balsamic to Uranus. Emotions are on the surface, but not yet fully revealed. We have an intuitive sense of what is about to happen. The past and future collide in the moment, present moment. The past haunts us. The future shimmers in and out with alternating images of Olympus and Hades. Will this planetary moment of truth be the harbinger of some historic climax that sets the tone for years to come? Is the question that I ask. Two grand trines complement each other at the lunar eclipse, suggesting a Star of David formation though it's not quite in all an orb, that integrates the eclipsed luminaries with Pluto, Pallas, Athena, and Jupiter. So fertile growth opportunities abound for deeper understanding of the long-standing personal collective issues 
and strategies available for healing and resolution. New healing modalities are emerging on many levels. Scalar technologies currently present hard-coded Tesla technology that accelerates the planet forward. We are learning that everything is energy. It is an understanding that the physical laws of the universe are non-physical. The task of, re of retraining is enormous and will take years, maybe decades or even centuries to be fully realized, but the work has begun. Each historical upheaval, each collective trauma and each personal trauma ultimately leads to homeostasis. It just takes time and time is an illusion. The total solar eclipse will be visible for 85 minutes at 5.59 Eastern time. It will last for five hours across Europe, Africa, the Mideast, Australia, the Philippines, and New Zealand, reaching totality at 7 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. The lunar eclipse will be visible across Asia, Australia, and Pacific in the Americas. The totality will be last for an hour and 25 minutes and will be exact at 6 a.m. Eastern time. Thank you for tuning in. This is how you can uh, reach me, read more about my work, find my, the other YouTube videos that I have recorded, uh, contact me if you would like a reading. Um, I, it's my pleasure here to, to be here today and, and deliver all this information. And I will see you again at the next Astrological Phenomenon. Namaste.